Have you ever thought about installing rigid foam insulation? If so, I'll share with you everything I've learned after spending 40 hours installing this super tough R in our attic. Let's get started. Installing rigid foam board like this Super Tough R has been one of those projects that I've been looking forward to, but just haven't had the opportunity to take on. So with our project house, we had an attic space that really needed to be re-insulated, and I thought this would be a great uh, product to try out in that space. One of the things I like to talk about on DIY Savvy is your return on your investment. And if it's taking me 40 hours to complete a project that if I had picked a different solution may have only taken me four or five or six hours, I'm using a tremendous amount of time with this product that I wouldn't be with another product. And that's an opportunity cost. That's time that I didn't have to go out and do other projects or earn income doing something else. So for me, uh, this particular application, this particular product, it just didn't work. So let's talk about where I think this product would work really well. First, new construction. If you're gonna put this up on the exterior of your house and you're taking a four by eight sheet, you're putting it up on the wall, you're screwing it in, you're not gonna have any problem. This is gonna work really well for you. I think it also work really well in basements where you can take, again, a four by eight sheet or maybe you have to cut it down to seven, seven and a half feet. You know, make one cut, one cut across the top, put it on the wall, glue it, screw it, you're all set. Um, any type of application where you can use the majority of the sheet and with a minimal number of cuts, I think this works really well. Um, where I don't think this works well is an application like I tried to use it on. I tried to use it in an attic. Uh, the space was really tight. I had a lot of angles to deal with. I had a lot of cuts to make. Just to give you an example, this box right here is probably 10% of the cuts that I made. And you can see that I made, ended up making hundreds of cuts. Uh, and it's just, it just uh, over time, there's no way it was worth it. Uh, I, like I said, I spent about 40 hours up in that attic. And if I had gone out and purchased um, a product like the Froth Pack, um, is it more expensive? Yes, but it would have would it have saved me time? Absolutely, it would have saved me a tremendous amount of time uh, because what I ended up having to do was every time I had a joint because of that space, like you'll see if you watch the rest of this video, um, there was never really a nice tight seal like this with the with the uh, pieces of foam board. There's always some little issue, some gap, some crack because of the space. <clears throat> The, uh, the boards weren't uh, plumb, they weren't square, they weren't level. So I ended up having to take great stuff and go around and seal every one of the joints where the foam board met, whether it was you know, a, a, a butt joint like this or a corner joint like this. There was always a place that needed to be sealed. So I ended up basically having to do the job twice. If I'd used the froth pack, that creates a, slight, a nice tight seal envelope and it's, it's a, almost a monolithic uh, piece of insulation because as you spray that foam joins together and it creates a nice tight seal. So I ended up basically having to do the job twice. I ended up putting the rigid foam up <clears throat> and then having to go back and air seal all of the gaps with the great stuff. So basically did twice the amount of work and it took twice the amount of time. So like I said, I think this works well in spaces where you can use large sheets with a minimum number of cuts. I don't think it works well in tight spaces where you're gonna have to make a lot of cuts. It just doesn't make sense. Um, it's too much work to try and cut this to fit uh, in so many different pieces like I was trying to use it for. So overall, I, I love this product. Um, this Super Tough R actually has a three layer membrane on one side and then it has the foil on the other side. So. I think it's going to give us a really nice tight seal in that attic space. I've already noticed a difference. Um, we had some really cold days, like 8, 9, 10 degree uh, low temperature, and I took some readings with my infrared thermometer. Uh, one side of the attic uh, in those drawers that I showed you or that you'll see in the video um, was about 50 degrees. Um, that side I had actually taken this foam board and I had just set it in place. It hadn't been glued, it hadn't been screwed down, it hadn't been air sealed. Uh, the other side was completely naked, so it was just the plywood boxes. 
we had about 50 degrees on the side with the rigid foam board and we had about 41, 42 degrees on the side without it. So just taking this and literally placing it around those boxes made about an eight degree difference in the temperatures that were coming through those boxes. So uh, I definitely think it's going to work. Um, I think it's going to be superior to trying to put any type of bat insulation up there because there's just no way to air seal that. One last thing before we roll the project video, I wanted to go ahead and apologize for some of the sound quality and the video quality. Uh, this is my third YouTube video and I'm still trying to figure out how to use the mics and how to do some sound editing and some video editing. Uh, so I just want to go ahead and let you know that uh, it's going to be a little bit choppy, but uh, if you stick through it, I hope, I hope you find some good information. Now, uh, the other thing is, is that this is not a sponsored video for uh, DuPont or Super Tough R. Uh, we went out and bought this on our own. I uh, just want to let you know that it's not a sponsored video for, for that product. So with that said, let's go ahead and roll the project video. Hey, welcome back to DIY Savvy. I'm Kyle, and in this video, we're going to be installing two inch rigid foam isopoly insulation on the backside of this wall right here. The reason we're going to do that is to separate the conditioned space that we're in now, which is a bedroom, from the unconditioned attic space that's on the other side of this wall and on the other side of this door. Before we head through this door, I want to show you this door real quick. This is made out of three quarter inch plywood. And it is the only thing separating this bedroom from this attic. If you know anything about wood in our, in the R value of wood, you know it's about one per inch. So this door right here is an R value of about 0.75, which is just atrocious especially considering that this attic space is about 35 degrees and our goal is to keep this bedroom somewhere between 65 and 70 degrees. So this can be massively approved on and that's what we're going to try to do. Now going into this space here on the right you can see the plywood box that was built to house the cabinets, not the cabinets, the drawers that are right here. So those drawers are inside this plywood cabinet. This did have some insulation on it, which you can see on top there. I've already started pulling it off to make room for the rigid foam. That's where we're gonna put rigid foam on these boxes here. And then once you get inside here, I've got some more rolled insulation that I'm gonna lay down on the floor. If we pan over here to the left, you can see what these boxes look like before. This is the insulation that was on them. Same as was over here on the, on the right side. I just haven't taken this off yet. Now, this attic space is cold. It's dirty. It's dusty. So what I'm going to do is get the mask on, get in here, start pulling these battens off that are holding this insulation on, pull the rest of this insulation off so that I can get some nice solid measurements Got the insulation off. I'm gonna let the dust settle for a little bit, and then we're gonna start pulling some measurements for our foam board. This is the uh, Super Tough R insulation. It's a DuPont product. Um, like I said, it's an R13 and it's two inches thick. I've taken the sheet of it. I've laid it out on some saw horses. Uh, this is the drawing that we put together earlier with the dimensions on it, and I've translated that onto the backside of this foam board with a Sharpie. I wanted to share a couple of lessons I've learned throughout the process. Uh, the first of which is a basic kitchen knife works really well to cut this material. 
Um, this is a non serrated blade. It's just a straight blade that I nicked from the kitchen. Uh, it's probably nine inches long. Um, it's not actually that sharp. Uh, I don't think you need something that's, that's you know, razor sharp. And what I've been doing is <clears throat> I've been using a metal straight edge like this um, as a guide. And so I'll mark out the cut that I need to make. <clears throat> I take this knife and I score it the first time. And then it takes about three or four more passes, about a, cutting in about a half inch every time to cut all the way through. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it gives you a nice clean cut. Uh, the second tool that I found works extremely well, and this is what I've been using most of the time, is a basic reciprocating saw with a metal blade on it. It's probably about a four inch, maybe five inch blade. And I do the exact same thing. I mark out the cuts I need, usually mark them with a Sharpie, lay up my straight edge, and then with this tool, I can make one cut. So I usually make a plunge cut towards the edge, and I just run it straight along my metal straight edge and it works extremely well. It makes a little bit of dust but not nearly as much dust as the circular saw and earlier on I said this is what I was going to use. Learned very quickly that this is not what to use. Um, it actually makes a huge mess. It makes extremely fine dust. We'll call it foam dust. Um, it gets everywhere. It like clings to you. It's almost like it's like static cling. It was all over my clothes, in my hair, in my eyes, all my shoes. Uh, it's all over the workshop now. And that was one board that I cut before I stopped using it. So I do not recommend using a circular saw. Uh, it just makes too much of a mess. And it's going to cost, it's going to take you an hour just to vacuum up and sweep up the, the floor of the workshop that you're using. So I highly recommend uh, a circular, or not circular saw, a reciprocating saw, metal cutting blade. Works extremely well. You can make fine tunes. You can cut it in angles. Uh, it actually cuts this stuff like butter. It just goes right through it, so it works really well. So I've got my mark made here. I've got my straight edge up against my mark. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to choke up on the blade <clears throat> so that I've got my finger here on the tip, and I'm just going to run it along the straight edge, <clears throat> and I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it, and you can hear that cover, that foil cover, breaking. <clears throat> and then you can hear the foam being cut. So once I get through that membrane the first time, it actually starts to go pretty easy. So like I said, every pass, I plunge it maybe half inch farther. And make three or four or five passes. All right, I think I've made it through. Yep, now all we gotta do is move the straight edge up a little bit, line it back up, and finish this off. And there it goes. As you can see, you get a really nice smooth cut. No, almost no dust. There's a few pieces down here. I've rearranged this slightly so I can show you how this reciprocating saw works. So we're gonna start on the edge here and we're gonna plunge it through. As you can see, that was much faster. This is what I was talking about. This is the dust that you end up with. But this is actually larger, uh, let's call it grain, than what you get with the circular saw. So, you know, I can deal with this. I'm not covered in it. It stays relatively close to the work surface. It actually kind of clings to it. But that was super fast. I was not really being precise because, again, uh, this is going up in the attic, and I'm going to foam seal 
uh, this edge. But you can see how much faster that was using the reciprocating salt. So just want to give you a quick uh, demonstration of the knife versus the reciprocating saw. Back in the attic for what I promise is the last time. I want to show you how this one section fits together. So I've got this outer piece here that runs the full length of the box, which is about 72 inches. And then I've got the top piece down here that I've notched in several places so that it actually fits around the rafters. So I've got a notch here, and I've got a notch on this other side, which you probably can't see, but it will fit on top of this box here, maybe. And it sits down. I actually had to cut another notch in this roof rafter over here so that the foam board slides underneath it, but it slides and slots perfectly into, except for the fact that, oh, there it goes. So it slots right there on top. Now, the next piece I have, this is triangular piece. I'm gonna fill this in, this bay here, stud bay with insulation, but I just wanna show you how this fits together. So I've got this triangular piece right here. It slides in pretty nicely. I left some space on the edge here so that I can butt another piece of insulation up and have some structure up against it there. For this side panel, I cut another piece that fits between these two by fours. And it slots in there fairly nicely. I've got a cover piece to cover this two by four here that's sticking out. It will sit right there on the edge. And then I've got one more piece over here to cover up this section of the wall into the bedroom. This is what I've ended up with. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more work putting some fiberglass bat insulation in between the studs uh, there and then I'm going to run a bead of expandable foam inside all of these joints to uh, really seal it up well. I pulled the camera off the tripod so that I could bring you down here to the section that is going to be really hard to see, but I've got another triangle of foam back there. I've got this piece on top. I cut another piece that fits in here and it works its way around those rafters. I cut notches so that it works around those roof rafters there. And this has been a pretty difficult place to work. Um, this section right here is only about 19 inches from this decking to the bottom of this piece of foam right here. So it's just a tight quarters. Um, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have just bought the uh, froth pack. And I'm thinking about actually doing that on this side over here. I wanna show you the finished product inside. We'll, uh, we'll go in there real quick and then uh, we'll wrap this project up. Show you what we ended up with. Overall, I'm happy with the result. Uh, this foam board was much more challenging to work with than I expected it to be. Um, I think if you were just doing a straight up install of 4x8 sheets, you'd be fine. But for me, trying to cut around all of these angles was just a, a huge pain in the butt. So, show you kind of what we ended up with here. I've got this large sheet installed on the back of those boxes. I put kind of a plate or a cleat down here that I've just screwed into the subfloor, which holds the board against the, uh, the box there. And then I made some homemade washers and just three inch screws to attach it there at the top. Um, I found that this foam board is not, it's not straight. It, several of the sheets had bows in them, 
which caused me to have to bend it into place. Um, you can see down here, I used some more of my homemade washers to attach it. Um, this is another section here where we had to cut some triangles to fit up in there. Like I said, um, overall, probably would, would never do this project again. It just took way too much time to get everything to fit. And then I still had to go back and you can see all of the great stuff oozing out of different seams. I had to go back and fill in all of those seams to air seal it. Um, if I had used a spray foam, like the, uh, the uh, froth pack that we talked about, I wouldn't have had to do any of that additional sealing. Uh, I'm probably gonna leave that great stuff just like it is. I found that it doesn't stick particularly well to this foam board, this Super Tough R. And when you start to come back and cut it along these seams, it tends to break. And I'm not sure what that's gonna do to my air seal. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. Um, no one's ever gonna be in here. And I don't think anyone's ever gonna seal it see it um, in some of the joints i just i did use some um, foam board adhesive and that seems to work really well to seal some of the smaller joints smaller gaps if you open this up you can see i've created an access panel here now i had to cut this before uh, it actually went into this opening because the opening was so small that i couldn't fit the full sheet into the door so I had to make a couple of cuts in that full size panel just to actually get it in the door and get it into place. But you can see I've got a handle on here which allows me to pull the door tight and easily take it out. Another thing I did was I beveled three of the edges on this door. So I beveled the two sides and I beveled the top. And what that does is it gives you a nice tight seal when you go to pull the door in. So these are, this is also beveled here. It's flat on the bottom, 90 degrees on the bottom. And like I said, when you pull it tight, it pulls that door in, creates a pretty nice uh, air seal. So on the, on the handle, what I did was just took a couple pieces of scrap plywood and I bolted it through. And then I screwed the handle to the plywood. And that gives you a really nice, strong, uh, handle to pull on this foam board to get a tight seal. If you just took this handle and screwed it to this foam board or you bolted it through this foam board, you'd end up ripping the, uh, the handle right off pretty quickly. But this gives you a nice solid surface to, uh, to grab onto. And all I do is I'm gonna drop it back in here, line it up, and then pull it tight. <clears throat> and you can instantly feel the difference. It's about 30 degrees outside right now it's probably 35 or 40 in the attic <clears throat> as soon as i put that panel up you can feel that cold air no longer flying right into the uh into the room here hey you made it to the end congratulations thanks for watching if you found any of the information in this video helpful please consider giving us a thumbs up uh, you can also subscribe hit that bell icon so that you get a notification when we upload a new video thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one Well, I was just about to start pulling this insulation off and I looked up here on top of this box and started noticing dead hornets everywhere. So kept going up the wall and found a nice looking hornet's nest. So you're always gonna find things like this in projects, little unexpected treats along the way. What I'm going to do is grab the shot back with a good filter on it and try and suck all of this up before I start moving this. Because the last thing I want to do is disturb all of these carcasses, have this stuff floating around in the air. So uh, we'll get the shot back out and we'll get this cleaned up. Um, I'm not sure what to do about this. I guess I'll just try and pull it out or pry it out. Um, like I said, they're all dead. It doesn't appear to be an active infestation, but I want to go ahead and get it cleaned up before we, before we move on. So we'll do that and then we'll come back.